Hello, good day and welcome back to Go and Run. And today we're going to continue with pot storage. But today we're going to be looking specifically at how to make our config map values, those key values, show up as files in the file system. And we can mount that volume. So we saw how to mount an empty volume. Now think of this as an extension of, the, of that. Instead of volume being empty, it's just going to have some files and those files will have the values from our config map. So let's take a look at what's going on here. So I did a little illustration to convey the idea, but it's really not that hard. And you will see when we get into the command line how easy this is. So we have a Kubernetes cluster. And as we know, config maps are outside of you know pods. They're like a different type of resource. And the way I like to think of a config of the config map as having several config map, name config map. And we saw that when we create a config map, we had to give it a name. And so let's say we had multiple config maps and they each had a name and so like A, B, C, whatever, right? Of course, you give it more sensible names. And I represented each config map, name config map there, like a database, because for me, again, within there is this key value pair, right? So it's like storage. And so now when we have a pod, and our pod of containers represented by those little round blue circles, um, we can say that, oh, oh, we want a volume defined at the pod level. Remember, we, we always define volumes at the pod level, and then our containers, whichever container we want, can then mount those that volume at a certain location that makes sense for that container within that pod, okay? And we saw in the previous video how multiple containers within that pod can among the same volume. So we did that already. So here, I'm just going to keep it simple. The question now is, where or is the storage or the information for that volume being provided? And before, we were we had the simple one of an empty directory. But now, we're going to have this special type that says, oh, this volume really gets its information from the config map, and specifically, in this example, from config map name C. Of course, we can have another pod which also defines some volume. And this volume could also say, you know what, I want to get data from a config map A. Now, it could have gotten from C also. So maybe you want to inject the same information into both the, um, parts. Now, remember, this is read-only information. So we don't have to worry about or if one part wants to write it and so on. This is read-only information. But here's an, that's exactly what's happening. So let's jump to the command line and see how to do this. So first off, I have my cluster running, um, my K3D cluster, but it doesn't matter. This works equally well with K3D, kind, or your Docker con, um, con desktop um, Kubernetes cluster. And so that's running and nothing is right now um, deployed. And so let's go back here. So as you can see, it's running a watch command to get config map, pods, and deployment. So if I come down to the bottom here, um, what I'm going to do is create a directory. So if we do ls, we can see that oh, we last worked on empty directory, but I want to use the config map we defined earlier. Now, I don't actually want all the files, but we'll sort that out later. So I'm going to do a con copy, copy recursively, and I want to copy the maps, and I want to put it in a directory called um, 1302 Kubernetes pod volume config map. Okay. And then let's cd into that directory 1302. And then I'm going to start up my VS Code. OK, so now VS Code is up and running. Let me zoom in a bit, make this a little bit large so it's easy to see. And like I said, I do not want all of this. So I'll select these. But I do want to keep this um, the configuration. So let's delete everything else. So what does our configuration look like? But this is what it is, and we give it the name my app. So let's call it something like that. My app config map. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so we we have this already, and we're not gonna spend any time because we've done this already, and we want to make these videos as short as possible, no longer than need to. So the next thing I need is a deployment. Deployment by setting that, and then say deployment. Now. For my deployment, I'm going to say I want to create a deployment, and this is a Kubernetes deployment, and it gives me some default like this. And you can call it my name, yada, yada, yada. 
I'm not going to change too much except for the container name. I'm going to call this Nginx. And of course, the image, I want to use Nginx this time. And we'll just say port 80. Okay, so that's it. And my deployment is finished and, and my configuration should be valid. And so I can come back here, clear my screen, and I can say kubectl apply minus f and ka directory. And I should be able to create my config map and my deployment. And sure enough, that's what we see. So if I reduce this a little bit, um, they're up and they're running. So there's my config map with its value. Now we don't have, we can ignore this entry here, but the only one we know is that we create this one called config map map my app dash config map. Okay, so that's all good. But still, we're not using you know injecting the values in that config map yet. So just as last week, we're going to go to our pod specification, which is here, and what we want to do in start is volumes. So if we type that, we scroll down, we'll see volumes, list of volumes that can be mounted by containers belonging to the pod or this pod. So if we do that, and then we can give each name to each volume. So let's just call it um, config1, let's say, a very creative name. And now I need to specify what type of volume. So that's the name of it. But what type? Last time we had empty directory. This time we're going to do config map. And so if I come down and I select here, you'll see that it says config map represents a config map that should populate this volume. And so, you know, it tells you a little bit of it and tells you some default mode. You don't have to worry about that because there's a default. As items to allow you to specify which keys value pair from your config you want to insert maybe you know we have three value keys defined but maybe you want to insert everything and then of course the name of that config map that we want to reference and so you know item is optional so we'll just go out it the easy way so let's just select this and then we want to do um, name that seems good enough to me and so now for a container since we only have one container, that's all we need to worry about here. Um, we can say we want to use volume mounts. And just as before, volume mounts, you know, mounts volumes to be mounted in the container file system. And so we change that. And now we can say what are which are the volumes, um, the mount path and name. Now I don't like the order in which they have this, so I'm gonna reverse it. But of course, since I reverse it, I have to change, you know, this to say, so this is an entry and that's just a property of that entry, that power element. Okay. So let's say that the mode we are referring to, of course, is the one called config one. So that's the one that's defined within this pod. And so where should we put this? Let's just call it config one very creatively. And so now that's it. So because when we define our volume here, we said it is coming from a config map and we didn't give a list of items, we should expect everything or at least three values to be injected. And we'll see how they're gonna be injected. And so we could come back and look at that. But for now, if we do apply again, let's see, our config map of course was on change, but our deployment, um we need to update that so what we can do is everything look like it's up and running so what we can do is go back here to k9 and there is our deployment select it and we can see it so we can type s for shell now once you're in the deployment you type s you can always get to one of the pods if you want to get a specific pod then you of course you have to select it but now i'll type s since you have one pod and we're in the nginx um, not one pod, sorry, container, one container or pod. So I'm in this pod and then this specific engine X container. And so if we go to, if we do ls slash, we should see that we should have something called config. And if we go into config one and we do ls, we should see, or ls minus l, we should see it all. Each one of these is a file 
and it was injected. What this means is our file is a symbolic link to some other file in the parent directory slash um, data, blah, 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 but we don't care. All we care about is that this has the data we want. And so we can check that. We can do cat SRV1 version, and we should see version one there, and there it is. And because we don't have a new line at the end of that file, that's why, you know, once it cat it, immediately put out the prompt after it. So that's why it's looking that way. So cat SRV2. And yep, once again, and so let me clean up the screen. And so you can do cat, and the next thing we had was the test data. And so there it is. So that's how easy it is, really is. We could end the video here, but I want to show you how you can have a little bit more control over what is injected. And so let's go back a little bit. We'll stay there. And what I'm going to do here is go to the deployment and Remember when we define the volumes, um, the volume in this case, which is config, we said the config map, but we could also specify items. And so there's this items here, and it's an array of key path, right? So each key, notice is an entry. So which key do we want to inject? And so from our configuration, we have test data and servers, servers one version, for example. So we can say we only want to insert this and we can actually give the path name. So within when it's mounted, notice this is going to be mounted in this path. But notice how when we did it earlier, we had a file name that was the name of the key. But now we can overwrite it to give it any name we want. So we can just call it um, SRV1 version.txt, maybe something like that. And of course, we can create another item entry by doing that. And of course, test data was the other key that we have. And we can call this um, test data that comes separate value if we want. And notice how, because you put in certain this data, you can choose the extension of the file which makes sense for you. Whereas before, you just used file name that had the key alone, it didn't have any file extension. Um, not that that's a big thing, but a big deal, but maybe you have some binary data you're trying to insert or JSON data, you might want it to format it file properly. Um, at least from, from looking at the file point of view, it gives you a hint of what you have there. So let's go back and let's clear our screen and we're going to do kubectl apply again. And yep, our deployment is already updated. And so we just saw something happen here, but let's go in and we say shell. And now if we do cd and once again ls minus l and now we can see there are only two files instead of three because we specifically asked for only two of those keys to be injected and notice how they have the names that we want so it doesn't matter but we can just again test comma separate value and there's the data so that's all there is to it very easy to have your config map inserted into your containers as file in a volume and this is how it's done so take care see you in the next video if you watch this video and you like how the material is presented please come and you're not a subscriber please consider subscribing if you're already a subscriber thank you so much for your time patience and support if you have any issue or you've had any issues with you know the examples or anything that i showed please let me know in the comments and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. See you in the next video soon. Take care. Bye. Stay safe.